Welcome to Boom Supersonic, may I help you? Nah, I'm just kidding, this is Matthew Burchette, and this is the future of aviation on Behind the Wings. So I'm here with George Bai of Bai Aerospace. George, thank you for being on Behind the Wings. This is really a cool honor for us to have you here with us. Tell us a little bit about your background. You're not just some guy that decided, hey, I'm going to fly planes. No, that's true. And thank you. Um, I've been passionate about aviation since I was a, a, a little guy. My parents both being pilots, we were very fortunate to have an airplane, went into the Air Force, flew a uh, had a great experience in the Air Force, and now, of course, here we are innovating with uh, new concepts and new designs. So one of the things I noticed when we came in is you guys have a mock-up, I believe, of a solar-powered UAV out front. That's right. That's pretty cool looking. We should go check that out. Let's go check it out. Okay. So George, this is your Silent Falcon, and I notice it's a UAS. What's the difference between a UAS and a UAV? UAS is system rather than vehicle. This comes with an antenna and computers, you know, to manage it. Okay. So it's a system. It's not just an airplane. It, it's all coming together. What is the Silent Falcon going to do or doing right now? Yeah, it's flying now. So oh, it's wow. in, in production now. It's been delivered to customers. Can you say who some of the customers well, are? It, International customers, NASA, DARPA, oh, some, oh. some great folks. If this thing's solar electric and you've got batteries in here, I'm assuming that the solar panels are actually on top of the wing? Exactly. Seems like the perfect place to put them. That's right. So we have a nice, long, efficient wing, but along the top of the wing are thin film solar cells. And they collect enough energy from the sun during the day so that this flies for five to seven hours. Gasoline UAV, like this, same size, that would fly for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Now, one of the things that we came here to see was your Sunflyer. There and we that's go. That's really what kind of has put you guys in the forefront of aviation technology right now. And that's because we're talking a fully electric aircraft. That's right. I'm happy. To, let's go take a look. I'll show you. Yeah, I think so. So, George, we're standing here by, let's call it your baby, you know, and this is the all-electric Sun Flyer. And I don't think people really understand what all-electric is really going to do to aviation. It's a big deal, Matthew. It, it is a big deal. Electric motor up front, just like in a car. Electric car, electric. Yeah, there are, there are no exhausts. No, there's no exhaust. 95% efficient electric motor. That's nuts. What's the cost per hour versus of this versus a, a nor like a Cessna 182? Generally speaking, they need 8 to 10, 12 gallons an hour, something like that. Give or take, that's 40 to $50 of fuel per flight hour. This is $3 of electricity per flight hour. The, the ability to drive costs down for these new pilots and to have a high-tech solution is exciting and I think a game changer to help turn around both pilot training as well as general aviation. Well if the museum will pay me more sign me up. There we go, um, right there. Because I will I will be one of the first customers. George, thank you so much. We've actually got a, another couple of places we want to check out while we're here on Centennial. Um, but thank you so much for giving us some insight into this amazing piece of equipment because it is cool. Thank you, Matthew. Boom! I'm here at Boom Supersonic, which is another wave of the future. And I've got Joe Wilding with us who is the chief engineer of what's going on in this building. Joe? Welcome, Matthew. Man, how are you? I'm awesome. So, tell me what we got going on here. Well, we're trying to recreate supersonic era and commercial air travel. We have not done that in like 40 years. Something like that. Yeah, Concorde retired a little over 15 years ago, and unfortunately the world's only been able to fly subsonic ever since. 
and you're gonna change that, aren't you? We're trying. All right, there is so much stuff in here that we gotta take a look at. Let's go check some of this stuff out. Let's do it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna keep talking, I wanna start looking. It's so shiny, I love this thing. And pointy. It, yeah, almost put it out an eye. So, how many people are you planning on putting in one of these things? About 50. Okay, so half of what the Concorde was. About basically. half, that's right. Um, and size? Are we talking Concorde size or? No, it's smaller than Concorde as well because of the fewer seats. Right. Um, so it's about 150 foot long. Um, so it's very close to being the same size as the B1A, of oh, course, yeah. that we all know at the museum. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Now, this really cool art piece, which is not really an art piece, but a route map, kind of give us an idea of what's going on with this because, I mean, that's a whole lot of lines. That's right. So we've done an analysis. Every line you see on this chart is a, a route that works with this airplane on at least once daily service. So there's 500 different lines in that chart. Wow. So 500 routes, it ends up being 1,200 or more airplanes um, that the world route structure today can support. The typical route New York to London. Yep. That's like, what, a seven hour flight? Today is a seven hour flight. With our airplane, it's just over three. Oh, now that's appealing. Absolutely. You know what else is appealing? Learning how this thing flies. And you've got some kind of cool mock-ups of the engine and the intakes and all sorts of stuff that my brain just can't handle. So can you explain it to me? Sure. All right, let's, let's go, go look. Yeah. All right, so I love models of all shapes and sizes, but this one's throwing me. I mean, obviously it's, it's your engine and ductwork, but what's going on up here? Yeah, so this is what we call a supersonic inlet. So this is one of the secrets to getting a supersonic airplane to fly really efficiently. On this version for a high supersonic airplane, much like Concorde or the F-14 um, at, the, at the museum, we have a, what's called a variable geometry inlet. So this inlet actually adapts itself for what speed you're going. And the way this works is as air flows in, it hits these ramps, it makes shock waves, the shock waves slow the air down, but in a really efficient way. So when the air gets through here and back to the engine, it still has all of its energy. And when you have all of its energy in the air, the engine can then take that, speed it up, spin it out the back really fast uh, for the minimum amount of fuel burn. You know what? I love this kind of stuff, but let's just be honest. What's the inside gonna look like? Do you I wanna mean, see it? Do you have an actual plane here? Sort of. Sort of, oh, now I'm really peaked. Can we check it out? Let's go check it out. Okay, <laughs> this is nuts. I am actually in the Boom supersonic airliner and check this out. I can actually even see out the windows, which by the way, are really big. Yeah, you like those big windows? Yeah, these, this place has got some really nice amenities. It What's does? going on with this? Well, so we're catering to business class travelers and nowadays, they have really nice amenities in the front of the airplane and so we've got to compete with that. So we're designing our interior to be a really great experience. So you can see the nice big seats, oh, nice. nice big windows. Up at 60,000 feet, you look out, you'll see black sky and you'll see curvature of the earth. Now, you guys actually have a mock-up, yeah? We do. So if you want to come out of the virtual world, we could step out into the hangar to the real world and we can go take a look at that. I don't know, I'm kind of liking it in here. It's All pretty right. fun. All right, fine. Now, this is your mock-up. That's right. Obviously, it's not full scale. Right. So this is like a half scale, maybe? So this is actually a full scale mock-up, but not of the eventual oh. airliner. Oh. We're actually doing a subscale prototype as our first airplane. Building an airplane the size of a B1A is kind of hard for a startup company. Yeah, probably. So we decided to take all of our engineering designs, scale it down one third scale, and build it into a small technology demonstrator that will prove out the aerodynamics, the engine intakes, and a bunch of other little details oh, on the airplane. Um, I kind of want to go back that direction because it just looks cool back there. Let's go check it out. All right. I'm holding a piece of the plane and I'm assuming this is a leading edge. That's right. That's this part of the airplane right here. Small section of it. And so this is all carbon fiber. That's right. Now, what gives it this color? Is that just a paint or what? Yeah, so the color is actually a material called copper mesh and it's for lightning protection. The copper mesh, when lightning hits it, should you ever get a lightning strike, it vaporizes and doesn't touch the underlying structure. So it makes the airplane safe to fly in storms. That's really cool. And this is so light. Yeah, so that's one of the secrets to this airplane um, is we're building it out of carbon fiber material. So I've got a piece here. This is carbon fiber. It starts out as a fabric, kind of like your shirt's yeah. made out of. Okay. You apply a resin to it, you build it up a bunch of layers and a tool, and then you get a part. 
so you can okay. feel how light that so is. So is this whole thing going to be carbon fiber? Very nearly the whole thing. Things like the landing gear and the engines are still right, metallic, sure. but most of the airframe is carbon fiber. Wow. Joe, this is definitely one of the coolest episodes we've ever done. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for this coming. It's been amazing. And thank you guys for tuning in because without you, we wouldn't have a series. And I know you guys are, are having fun because you keep watching. I'm having fun. Stick with us because next month we're actually doing Flight for Life. That should be really cool. Who doesn't like helicopters, a million parts, all trying to get away from each other really, really fast. Anyway, thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you next month.